But first, America in shutdown, day 30, if you can believe it. Now, the American death toll surpasses 30,000 people tonight. But even with that staggering number and all the loss of life that comes along with it, there was some good news today. It looks like we're headed absolutely in the right direction. With almost a few exceptions, you have every state that is either doing better or on the way to doing better. Over the last five to six days, we've seen declines in cases across the country, and this has been very in reassuring for us. In terms of our cases and number of hospitalizations, number of vent uh, that are being utilized, they're all trending in the right direction. Uh, we certainly have, have flattened the curve. Net change in hospitalizations, down, that's good news. ICU admissions is down, that's good news. Intubations are down, that's very good news. Uh, I, I just smiled, like we needed this good news. The original models were very wrong and a lot of people have been social distancing and other things are happening as well. We'll get into that later in the week, but amazing. Look at this New York chart on daily hospitalization. It was up behind Cuomo during the press conference. That's a beautiful thing. Look at where it's going. And that's after such a brutal six weeks in the city. Now, remember, it was just three weeks ago that the angle was basically alone and strongly questioning the models that had predicted a tsunami for New York hospitals. Remember Governor Cuomo's claim that he would ne need nearly 30 to 40,000 ventilators in the state? Well, today, this is what he said. We've stabilized our health care situation. New York had one of the earlier curves. There are other places in this country are now seeing increases in the death rate, and they're seeing stress on their health care system. We're going to send 100 ventilators to Michigan and 50 to the state of Maryland. They're, they're giving away their ventilators. That's how comparatively well they're doing when it comes to critical care in New York. And this is where things stand in California. Now, remember, it's a state of 40 million people. It reported 76 coronavirus deaths so far today for a total of 864 deaths. By August 4th, if the newest projections are accurate, the mortality rate there will be astronomically low. Gosh, what's going on in California? Why is it happening that way? They closed down on what, March? 15th, 17th. But can that really explain all this? Well, a study reported in The Economist that many more Americans with mild or no symptoms were undoubtedly infected with COVID-19, but never tested. That's that denominator we've been talking about. If millions of people were infected weeks ago without dying, the virus must be less deadly than official data suggests. COVID-19 takes 20 to 25 days to kill victims. The paper reckons that 7 million Americans were infected from March 8th to the 14th, and social data shows that 7,000 deaths three weeks later. The resulting fatality rate is 0.1 percent, similar to that of the flu. That's amazingly low, just a tenth of some other estimates. Well, by comparison, look at where COVID winds up in mortality, as we said, as compared to the flu. OK, there it is. Fascinating, given what our political leaders had predicted again just 21 days ago. And of course, eminent scientists who were informing them. Now, despite all the good news, there's no sign that liberal governors or mayors are changing their draconian responses. In fact, some may even be ramping them up. L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti still says no big gatherings. Until there's either a vaccine, some sort of pharmaceutical intervention, um, or herd immunity, uh, the science is the science, and public health officials have been very clear. We've got many, many miles to walk before we're going to be back in those environments. But a few weeks ago, he was warning that L.A. County was going to be like New York City. Well, it, what happened to that? Thankfully, that didn't come to pass. Well, if the citizens of California, if they're not happy with these decisions at some point, they're going to need to make their voices heard. They're going to need to speak up in any way that they can. These are elected officials. They're supposed to be representing the health of the whole state and making sure people are behaving responsibly, for sure. Like small business owners, well, they did this yesterday in North Carolina and today in Michigan, where thousands of patriots rallied for a reopening. We're going to talk to an organizer in a moment. 
Now, today I was thinking about this desperate need to reopen America. You, you see it, you feel it, people are, are, are getting antsy, but not just because they want to go out to a restaurant, because they sense what's really happening. And then the ongoing violations of our civil liberties in the shutdown, we've been documenting them. Well, I ran across a recent Vanity Fair interview with Anthony Fauci. And the question to him, believe it or not, was about whether it's safe during the crisis for people to use the hookup apps like Tinder and Grindr. Well, he answered the question, and here's what he said. You know, that's tough, because it's what's called relative risk. Everybody has their own tolerance for risks. You could figure out if uh, you want to meet somebody, if you're looking for a friend, well, sit in a room and put a mask on and, you know, chat a bit. If you want to go a little bit more intimate, well, then that's your choice regarding a risk. Bingo! Okay. Life is filled with risks, in other words. We should all be careful and we should all be responsible, but the government cannot, nor it really should try, to eliminate all risks associated with COVID-19 any more than it could with the H1N1 or the swine flu. When we step out of the door, when we walk onto the streets, we enter a building, we get into a car, get on a bike, there are always relative risks. But the damage to millions and millions of lives, including children's lives, and our basic freedoms during the shutdown, that's also very real. And for many, it has been absolutely devastating. Many are willing to take the risk of contracting the virus. We've seen that in the polling, frankly, what they rate as more worrisome to them. And they would risk this in order to preserve their way of life. There's also death involved in keeping it close. When you look at mental health, when you look at suicides, suicide hotlines who are, which are exploding, people that didn't take drugs and now they're becoming drug addicted because they're going through a problem, they have no job, they have no money coming in. We have to get back to work. For President Trump, all of America is the patient. And if we don't reopen soon, she's going to flatline. And those are my thoughts at the end of day 30. America in shutdown.